Hey everybody, Eric Wagner here with another video. So recently I got a really great email from a customer and they were asking a question. Hey, uh, the local fire department wants to know the latitude and longitude of all of the fire hydrants. How can I provide that information to them in, ex in an Excel document? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's go ahead and dive into ArcGIS Pro and see how we can do this quickly and easily. So here we are, we are in Pro. I have all these red dots representing my fire hydrants. And if I go ahead and open up the attribute table, we can see I don't have much going on here. Uh, asset ID, install date, but nothing about latitude and longitude. Well, luckily that information is stored on the back end. We just need to bring it to the front. And I can do that using a geoprocessing tool. So within Pro, if you click on the Analysis tab and click on Tools, we can search for all the different tools that ArcGIS Pro has to offer. So I'll search for just simply XY, and I'll see that I have the tool Add XY Coordinates. This one's pretty simple. So I can use the drop down to select my fire hydrants layer. Now I can click run, but just to be sure that we're using uh, the right coordinates, I'm going to specifically choose WGS 1984. Those are tr your traditional latitude and longitude coordinates that people will expect to receive. So I'm going to click on the environments button here to ensure this. And then uh, I'm going to set my output coordinate system by clicking on this little globe icon here. And WGS 1984 is within geographic coordinate system, but I don't actually feel like looking for it. So I'm just going to search WGS space 1984, press enter, and that makes life a little bit easier. So geographic coordinate system, world, WGS 1984, click OK, and press run. And in a couple seconds, we'll see two new columns are going to be added here for our X and our Y values, Y being latitude, X being longitude, and now what I need to do, though, is I need to get this out of ArcGIS Pro and into Excel. Luckily, this is pretty easily easy. So if you currently have any features selected, I'm going to recommend that in the Map tab, you press the Clear button. And so what this is going to mean is that none of your fire hydrants, and I can see this down here, uh, 0 out of 1,300 are selected. And I can click the Switch button, which is going to select everything. And then I can press the Copy button. And that's going to copy all of my selected records. And if I go into Excel now and click into cell A1, do a control V or right click paste, we can now see we have the information about our assets, our latitude and longitude. You can save this table and you can now share it with the local fire department. Now, let's say maybe your service territory covers a number of different um, you know, fire department's districts. Well, maybe then you don't want to share the locations of all the fire hydrants, just those that fall within a particular boundary. We can do that as well with some really simple geospatial analysis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, clear my selected features. And I have a layer here of all of my different districts, cleverly named A, B, C, and D. And let's say it was District A here in the southwest that wants to know the locations of their fire hydrants, these latitude and longitudes. Well, I need to select only those fire hydrants that fall within this boundary. So what I'm going to do is, from the Map tab, I'm going to click Select, click in here, and just like that, I've selected this boundary. It has not selected the fire hydrants, but we can have GIS select all the fire hydrants within this boundary for us pretty easily. And the tool that does that is the Select by Location tool, which is still within our Map tab, right here under Select by Location. So for my input features, this is what I actually want to have be selected, that is to say, my fire hydrants. And I want those that intersect or fall inside of my districts. Now here's the thing. GIS is smart enough to know that because we've selected District A, it's only going to search for things that are inside of District A and ignore B, C, and D. I'll click OK. And see, notice only the fire hydrants within this boundary have been selected. So again, I'm going to open up my fire hydrants attribute table. And we can see it's only selecting 245 out of the 1300. Again, I'll press the Copy button. I'll go into Excel, and here in a new sheet, right-click, Paste, and we can see that, here we go, we've got those fire hydrants. And if I scroll down to the bottom, we'll see that it goes up to 246. Now, that simply does not match the 245 that we saw in ArcGIS Pro, just simply because our top row, row 1, is a header. So 246 minus 1, 245 matches up with what we got in GIS. So this is how you can calculate your latitude and longitude values for your point features. This is how you can then take that information 
and get it into Microsoft Excel using that copy function. And this is also how if you wanted to choose a subset of data, you could do that as well and still follow it in that copy and paste function. But let's not forget that we also have the ability to share information through web maps. So while an Excel table like what I've shown here is good, it's also something to consider that you can share through a web map as well. If you've never made a web map before, check out the links below to learn how this is done. As always, I hope this helps and thanks for watching. Thank <music> you.